Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I am going to explain you the basic relation in between energy and wavelength for generation and recombination. So before I start with explanation, let me tell you how many things that I am going to cover in this video. See first, I will explain you how exactly generation and recombination that happens inside semiconductor material. After that, I will explain you how many ways are there by which there can be generation and recombination inside semiconductor material and at last I will explain you the basic relationship in between energy and wavelength for generation and recombination. So, let us see first how generation and recombination take place inside semiconductor material. See at 0 Kelvin temperature all the valence electrons that will be there in valence band. Now, what is the meaning of valence electrons? Valence electrons are the electrons which are there in outermost orbit of silicon atom. So, silicon is having 4 valence electrons, right? And those 4 electrons are connected by covalent bonds with their neighbor atom. So, all those valence electrons that will be there in valence band, right? And conduction band will be empty at 0 Kelvin temperature. But as if we apply energy to valence electrons, then those electrons will be excited and that those electrons will be moving inside conduction band. So, let us consider here we are having one electron and we are applying some energy to this electron, right. So, what will happen? This electron now it will move inside conduction band. So, now you can say this electron will be now free. Right, so you can say this is free electron which is there in conduction band and instead of electron over here there will be vacant space. So, this vacant space that is referred as hole and this process is referred as generation we are saying that is GTH. Right, so generation happens as and when electrons are absorbing energy. So, how we can have that generation process? generation process that happens based on how electrons are absorbing energy, right. Now, when you talk about thermal equilibrium, then see this generation process and recombination process that will be having same rate. Why the reason is that state of conduction band and state of valence band that will stay in equilibrium. So, in equilibrium, generation process and recombination process that will be having equal rate. So, here inside semiconductor generation means what? Generation of electron hole pair. Recombination means what? Those electrons which are free right now that is getting recombined with holes which are there inside which are there inside valence band. So, there is reverse process as well. So, here electrons may be having recombination with hole over here right that is referred as recombination RTH. So, this generation and recombination rate that will be equal in thermal equilibrium remember this. So, now you have a fair enough idea about what is generation. Generation means electrons are absorbing energy and by which those electrons which are there inside valence band they will be moving inside conduction band right. You can say those are free electrons which are there inside conduction band and inside valence band there is vacant space that is referred as hole. So, that is how generation and recombination that takes place inside semiconductor material. Now, there can be second question how many ways are there by which we can have generation and recombination. So, here I will be going to list those three ways which usually we use in varieties of devices which are made up of silicon or germanium right. So, here for generation and recombination, one process is thermal process. In thermal process, we will be increasing temperature, right. So, by increasing temperature, we can excite electrons which are there inside valence band and they can move inside conduction band. Second way is by applying light energy. So, here you can say we are applying light energy and that light energy will be H into F, where F is frequency of light, H is Planck constant. And third way, that is by applying strong electric field or you can say electric field. So, as if you apply electric field, 
to semiconductor material there can be generation process here in this video i'll be discussing about this light in which by applying light we can have generation and by having generation we will be establishing relation in between energy and wavelength over here right now see first question that should be like what are the wavelengths or what are the energies that could be absorbed by semiconductor material so if you observe here electrons electrons will be there inside valence band right so here see top edge of valence band that is ev and here we are having conduction band bottom edge of conduction band that is ec so how much minimum energy that we need to give it to electron to have generation that will be forbidden energy gap eg right but here if you observe this conduction band that is not single energy it is band right this valence band that is not single energy line it is band so what will be the maximum energy that could be given to electron over here so that will be this gap let us say this is eg dash so here how much energy that these electrons can absorb over here so if i say that energy is e then that energy will be in between eg and eg dash right so here this e that can be there in between eg to eg dash right so this much energy that can be absorbed by semiconductor material now here we are deal with to establish what are the wavelengths which can be absorbed by semiconductor material so for that first i am going to explain you this energy in form of wavelength so here if we talk about energy then energy in terms of frequency that is h into f where f is frequency h is planck constant see this frequency is velocity of light into lambda so now we are having energy in terms of wavelength right see here in majority of cases you will be observing this energy will be given to you in terms of electron volt so as if this energy is given in terms of electron volt then how to have a conversion so for that here i am going to consider this energy now in terms of electron volt so here you will be multiplying q so here you will have to divide that q right now this q is how much 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 this is velocity of light this is planck constant all those things are constant right so majority of times you will be given with wavelength in terms of micrometer so here if you wanted to have energy in terms of electron volt with respect to wavelength which is there in terms of micrometer right so in that situation this total constant that will be 1.24 c h is 6.625 into 10 to the power minus 34 c is 3 into 10 to the power 8 q is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 and here wavelength that we are considering in terms of micrometer so just multiply 10 to the power 6 over here and we are considering this as 10 to the power minus 6 in terms of micrometer so if you apply all those things then this constant will be 1.24 so that will be the case which will be given to you in majority of problems that's why i'm considering this energy in terms of electron volt and wavelength in terms of micrometer that is how this relation is there now see as i have told you this semiconductor can absorb energy in between eg to eg dash right so if you wanted to understand how wavelengths will be there then see if i say with this eg wavelength is lambda g and if I say with eg dash, wavelength is lambda g dash. So you just apply this in this basic relation, right? So you can have you can have this calculation in terms of wavelength even. So here eg now that will be 1.24 divided by lambda g less than or equal to this e will be 1.24 divide by lambda and 
this eg dash that will be 1.24 divided by lambda g dash so here 1.24 this will get cancel and this is there in denominator so if you make it to numerator in that situation your relation will be lambda g greater than or equal to lambda greater than or equal to lambda g dash so see these are the wavelengths lambda g to lambda g dash that could be absorbed by semiconductor material so based on this understanding we will be solving some problems even in future coming videos that's why i thought before i solve problems i should explain generation and recombination in terms of light even the reason is based on light also you should understand this i hope you have understood this still if anything that you like to share please note it down in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video